Hi, Taylor Mitchum here from Dronero, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how to start a drone mapping business right now. So you're probably thinking to yourself, I want to start mapping with my drone. I want to start making money mapping with my drone, but what should I do to get started? And of course, the number one thing, and I'm assuming you're either in the process of doing this or you've already done it, is to get your Part 107 certificate. Um, once you have that, this is when the practicing needs to begin. So the next thing you need is the correct equipment. And of course, that's your drone, like something like this Altel XR Premium. But I would suggest if you're really going to get serious about mapping, is that you invest in the Phantom 4 Professional or the Phantom 4 Advanced or better. And the reason why I say that is because the P4P's battery life is excellent and their camera is also excellent. So it's a great overall drone. It's a great overall drone for business, but it's also a great mapping drone because of the battery life and because of the good camera. The other thing about DJI drones in general is that they support third party applications. So if you want to do any autonomous drone mapping flights, like with the Drone Deploy app or the Pix4D app, one of those other apps, um, they support that natively. And in fact, DJI has their own app that does mapping called the DJI GS Pro. So those are all great. And like I said, the P4P is a great platform to get started or even continue with. I know people who do professional drone mapping with a P4P and they have done some great work. So now we, we got our part 107, we're getting, you know, we got our equipment. On the other side of the equipment is that you also need to get some sort of mapping software. So there are a lot of them out there, but the, these are the probably the best for my opinion. And the whole video is not going to be about me comparing the different software, but I'll go in depth a little bit into each one. So there's Propeller, there's Pix4D. Drone Deploy and Precision Mapper. So I'll start with Pix4D. Pix4D is what I use personally and for my mapping. And the reason why is because number one, it's it processes directly on your machine. So your data doesn't go to a cloud or to somewhere else. It processes directly on your machine. So your data stays with you. And that's something my clients in particular very much appreciate as privacy is very, very, very important to them. So that's why I use Pix4D and also because I have more control over how my maps are processed. Um, and what I mean by that is in Pix4D, you can do manual tie points and you can add ground control points and things of that nature to help your maps come out a little better, especially if you didn't take your photos perfectly um, on the first go around. So that's why I really like Pix4D. Um, the next piece of software is also very popular is Drone Deploy. It is a cloud-based platform that you take your pictures and then you upload them onto the cloud and then eventually they'll process it and they'll send you back your information. And that's the part that I don't like about cloud services is that they process it on their own time and the more money you pay, the faster they'll process your stuff depending on who, how many people are in the queue and things of that nature. So. There's Drone Deploy, there's also Precision Mapper. They're a little bit, I think a little bit newer. Um, but what's cool about Precision Mapper is that they have different algorithms for whatever kind of map that you're thinking about making. So they have agriculture, they have agriculture algorithms, they have um, different surveying algorithms, GIS algorithms, things of that nature, plant health algorithms that can help enhance your map. So if that's something you're interested in, you should definitely look into Precision Mapper. And then the last one, is Propeller. And Propeller is really cool because they spit out reports and they're very similar to Drone Deploy, but they'll spit out reports and they have uh, different pieces of hardware technology that works with their app as well. But I would highly suggest if you really want to get into mapping that you try out all four for yourself um, and they all have free trials, try them out and figure out which one is going to be best for you. I will say Pix4D has the highest learning curve by far between all of the different mapping softwares. But again, it's the one that I use because it gives me the greatest control over how my data is processed and it also keeps the information for my clients local versus sending it out to a cloud. Um, so 
we have our part 107, we have a drone, we need to get our software, which we already discussed. And the next thing we need to learn about is photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is a science behind being able to do mapping with a drone. And it is not a new science. It's not something that came out three years ago when people started mapping all crazy with drones. It's been a while, it's been around for a while. So definitely start reading up on photogrammetry to understand the art and the science behind it and how exactly it works. Because anybody can pick up a drone and type go in the Pix4D app or in the Drone Deploy app and watch the drone fly in a grid pattern, right? But sometimes there's going to be instances where you're gonna have to fly certain areas manually and you need to understand how photogrammetry works in order to do that, in order to get great maps. So read up on photogrammetry. And the last thing I'm gonna say um, as far as like the equipment goes and the, the basic getting started part of this goes is go out there and practice. Go out there and start mapping everything. Map your neighborhood, map your local baseball field, map your house, map wherever you are because the more practice you get, the better you are, are going to be able to deliver final deliverables to your client and that's really important. So practice, 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 practice. So now we got the practical side of it done. We got our part 107. We went out, we got our equipment, we picked out our software, we practiced. The next thing we're going to want to do is understand exactly what our clients are looking for. And so there's really no value in just giving them a map just for a map's sake. They need to be able to get some sort of results from the map. And um, in order to get some sort of results, you have to understand their problems. And that goes back to you talking to your clients and understanding exactly why they're using your mapping services and understanding why your services are valuable to the clients. But that's really important because how you do the map, how you process the map, what maps you suggest to your clients um, are going to hinge upon how you can solve their problems within mapping. So you definitely want to talk to clients, figure out what their issues are, how they're using drone maps, how they're helping them, things of that nature. And then lastly, you're gonna to wanna to practice, of course, and I know I touched upon this before, you're gonna to wanna to practice mapping, but you're also gonna to want to practice um, exporting different types of maps. So sometimes, especially if you're working with more technical companies or you're working with surveyors and things of that nature, you're gonna to need to output more than just an OBJ file or a GeoTIFF file. You may need to put out an AutoCAD file or a GIS file. So I highly suggest that you go and learn a little bit about CAD and learn a little bit about GIS as well, just so you're familiar, not only with the software programs that people use for that, but exactly what those sciences are. GIS is Geographic Information Systems, is, and CAD is a, a 2D and 3D uh, rendering software. A lot of engineers use it especially, especially like AutoCAD and things of that nature. They do 2D and 3D. Uh, things with that software. So, and the last thing I will say about starting a drone mapping business is that you need to look up, and this is something people don't talk about a lot, but it is imperative. You need to look up the surveying laws for your state. So in order to be a surveyor and to complete surveys, you have to be a licensed surveyor. So you cannot go out and do a survey unless you are a licensed surveyor or you're working under a licensed surveyor. And so now you're probably thinking, what is a survey? Well, every state has a little bit different definition of what exactly a survey is. So you need to take the initiative and go look up your state surveying board and figure out exactly what the definition of a survey is for your state because you don't want to be in violation of that. You don't want to be doing licensed surveys if you're not, I mean, you don't want to be doing surveys if you're not a licensed surveyor. So, um, and another common question I get is, how do I become a licensed surveyor? Um, it requires you to, I believe, get a bachelor's degree in something, engineering or surveying. You have to have an engineering or surveying related degree. You have to have a certain number of years of work experience, AKA it's not as simple as a part 107 where you go take a test. It takes years to become a licensed surveyor. So again, look up the surveying laws for your state and make sure that you are not in violation um, because you cannot do a survey unless you are 
a licensed surveyor and you're not going to know unless you look up your state's specific laws. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the videos I put out every single week. One of the most common questions I get asked is how to get clients for your drone business. And so I put out a free course just for you. If you click the first link in the description box, type in your email, I'll send it right over. It's a free client course that will teach you how to get profitable clients for your drone business in four days or less. And again, it's free. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Fly safe.